This is how you can use AI to learn tech skills faster. First things first, how does AI powered learning differ from typical learning? Personally, as someone who's used both methods, I really do think that using AI to learn new skills, learn a new tool, learn about a new concept, learning all these things become a lot faster when you're using an AI tool like ChatGPT, Bard, or Copilot. Just to list a few popular ones. This can look like asking ChatGPT to create you a beginner level guide for how to use a tool like Nmap with example inputs and example output, as well as explain step by step what happens when you're completing each step of the learning guide. You can also make it specifically focused on the features of Nmap that are most commonly used so that you're able to get maybe the top 10 or 20 commands to scan a port. This helps you save time because you're able to have a comprehensive guide made just for you specifically with the parameters that you're looking for that is beginner friendly without having to go through the official reference documentation which has the same information but may take a little bit more time. And because the learning guide will be suited to your learning needs and wants, there's also going to be a big difference between a generic standard learning guide that you'll find online about Nmap. The same can be true for learning a new coding language, learning about a specific area in cybersecurity like digital forensics, or even helping you create a Security Plus certification study guide from scratch, which is something that I would have loved to have when I was studying for my Security Plus. So now that you know the extent of how far you can use these AI tools, how do you choose the right skill set to learn? This really depends on you, and I do think that there's a method to it. And I think one of the easiest ways to think about it is whether or not you're interested in being on the engineering side or the analyst side. The engineer is the one who builds the tool. They may get really deep into the technical details of how something is built, how something is configured, as well as how it's set up. While the analyst is someone who uses the tool to make, to make predictions, find evidence, trace back logs, and essentially someone who's doing the hands-on work for a specific initiative or project. Now, it's not to say that you can't be both of these things. I I do think that in your career, there's definitely going to be opportunities to be able to build things as well as being able to use the actual tools for the tasks and projects that they're meant to be used for. But starting out in your career, since you're a beginner, I do think that the analyst route is typically going to be a more popular one for anyone who is entry level or more early on in their career. But that's not to say that you also can't start in the engineering path. For the engineering path, you're typically going to be looking at roles like software engineering, security engineering, network engineering, etc. While on the analyst side, you may be looking at roles like a security analyst, a data analyst, a business analyst. There's definitely no right or wrong path to take here and it really is up to you what you're interested in most because having that initial curiosity or interest in the specific role and the tools and skill sets that you'll be using in that role are definitely going to really help you kind of excel and preemptively improve your learning speed with or without using AI tools. So if you are currently looking to get your career started in tech, I'd like to introduce you to Dice.com's newest career report, Optimizing Your Tech Career. This has every topic ranging from the current state of the tech industry, which will be especially important if you're someone who is entry level or just starting to look into a career in tech, as well as content for every stage in your career, ranging from year one, landing your first tech job, which includes articles like what type of company you should join, preparing to apply an interview prep, mastering your skills, negotiating for your compensation, and pursuing certifications. Going into year one of landing your first job, in this article you'll find different resources like hearing from another engineer's point of view and experience. They also provide a worksheet that you can use to navigate year one that'll help you make decisions and determine the logistics of your tech career. They also cover the different types of companies that are out there. For example, startups, established companies, SMBs, or small to medium sized businesses where the work you're doing, the responsibilities that you have, and the skill sets that you'll be learning may be different depending on the type of company Company that you join. In year three, you'll focus on settling into your career where they share information about continuous growth in your career, the value of leadership skills, as well as keeping your resume and portfolio up to date. In year five, you're focusing on longevity. This means building long-term networks, refining your soft skills, maybe even jumping tracks into a different area of technology that you may be ready to learn more about, potentially advancing to manager or subject matter expert roles, is overall gauging where you are in your career in terms of happiness, work-life balance, etc. Year 10 plus is when you're focusing on the path towards becoming a specialist or a C-suite, as well as delving deeper into the important topic of ageism, which personally I think is an article that everyone in tech should be reading. Overall, the report is really easy to use, which is awesome because Dice.com meets you where you are and provides the resources and insight that is specifically catered to the different stages of a tech career. You can check out the latest Optimizing Your Tech Career report from Dice.com using the link in my description. The report is completely free to use, so definitely use this resource to your advantage. Thank you to Dice.com for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to the rest of the topics.
All right, so next up, what does a customized learning path or guide look like? Personally, I am a sucker for study guides, and this may look like a collection of three to five specific learning guides that an AI tool may have helped you create that you can use as a reference. For example, let's say you want to go into pen testing. You may have one study guide specifically dedicated to what pen testers do, what are the popular tools they use, what skills they need for the job, how do they spend their time, everything related to a high level of what the job description looks like, as well as, of course, any certification that you may need. The Pen Test Plus and the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification, or the CE maybe two popular ones on this list are good options for your early career. You may also have a study guide for Nmap, like we've discussed in the beginning of this video, a beginner's article for Wireshark and Burp Suite, as well as even a guide used for learning basic scripting skills. This will likely cover most of the stuff that you need in the beginning of your career, specifically for entry level or junior level pen testing roles. Of course, there are plenty of resources out there, whether they're video or articles, to learn about these skills, specifically using their official documentation and reference guides. The goal of using these AI generated beginner level guides is to get the hands-on experience that you won't get just reading a reference doc or the official documentation. You want to get the hands-on skills using Nmap, using Burp Suite. A lot of these tools may have free editions or community editions that you can download and use for free to help you get the practice that you need. And after you're able to comfortably use these tools in your personal projects, in a project in your portfolio, you can add these projects and these tools onto your resume to be able to then talk about with interviewers and hiring managers to be able to sell your skill sets and really be able to show them how you learn and work on hands-on technical projects. And now going into specifically interactive coding assistance, one of the most popular ones is Copilot, which is a tool that can auto-complete code, fix a bug in your code, or explain what a piece of code is doing. And this is all really helpful for someone who may be interested in learning a scripting or coding language. And I do think it's a great place to start as a beginner. Personally, I do think that starting with a language like Python is very easy for beginners because it's very easy to read. And it's also relatively popular even in production applications in small and large companies. If you're interested, specifically in scripting, I also think Python is a great choice. JavaScript is another popular option, and both of these languages are pretty well used, so it'll be to your benefit if you learn a popular language starting out. Java is another option if you're interested in going into backend or application development. The key thing here is to focus on learning how to learn. For example, you may not be using Python in the next job that you go into, or maybe you start off using Python and the team pivots. Now you're suddenly learning React.js. There's definitely a lot of different scenarios where this can happen and the job of a developer isn't always to code in the same exact language for the rest of your career. While it's really helpful to become a subject matter expert in one specific coding language or one specific area, for example, front end or back end, there may be times in your career where you may have to switch to a different area or you have to switch into using a different coding language. And your goal is to be able to learn how to pick up and learn at least new languages as efficiently as possible so that the first time you learn a language may be the hardest, but after that, the learning curve should really go down because you have those foundation coding skills already. You you can also use AI tools to assist with documentation. Obviously, you shouldn't put any confidential information into an AI tool, but a lot of companies are creating their own private instances of AI tools and AI assistance. And using those tools, they may be able to help you optimize a piece of documentation that you're writing, write you a reference guide based on the tool that you have. And because writing documentation isn't everyone's favorite thing to do, I really do think that this will help you save time and effort for optimizing the things that AI can do for you. Why do you think that there's a lot of fear about AI taking over jobs, especially in the tech sector, I still think that AI can be used to your advantage and make you better at your job so that you can focus on the important tasks, on solving the hard issues, and if you can use an AI tool to help you write documentation that you can then review and tweak as you need, really is a win for you. And last but not least, you can also use AI to help you generate your projects and portfolio. I often get questions about where to start and, and how to come up with a personal project to be able to add to your resume. And while of course there are plenty of ideas out there or things that you can come up with yourself, you can also use an AI assistant tool to be able to create your project that is catered to the specific scenarios, the tools, the skill sets, the topics that you may be most interested in. This includes things like data analysis projects. Maybe you want to pull Twitter data from their API and analyze it and come up with some kind of conclusion or prediction. Or maybe you're trying to go into software engineering and you want to build an application that does XYZ, but you don't really know where to start. And that this is where AI tools can really come in handy because they're able to provide you those recommendations based on what exactly you're trying to get out of that project and what skill sets or languages that you're trying to learn. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. 
Hopefully this video was helpful and gave you an idea of where to start using tools like ChatGPT, Bard, and Copilot to be able to kickstart the learning for your tech career, learning new skills, new languages, and just the overall foundations of the area in tech that you're interested in going into. Don't forget to check out Dice.com's Optimizing Your Tech Career Report using the link in my description, so definitely utilize it to your advantage. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m., and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!